What's going on, guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS, bringing you a random matchup that we had this weekend against none other than the Dark Knights, also known as TDK. And as you see it right there on your screen, taking a huge loss, uh, losing 78 to 82. Uh, TDK did beat us by a four-star differential. Uh, to say the least, not our best performance, um, as we'll see you know, later on. Not going to be a straight up recap, but I do have some uh, specific attacks that I wanted to highlight uh, for this war. And again, this was a random matchup. And I also wanted to give uh, TDK a big shout out. And this is the reason why right here, if we look at their base number 18, uh, this base, uh, no, that's 19, this base right here, um, is a fully maxed Town Hall 10, a uh, fully maxed defense Town Hall 10. Our number 18 on our side is a Town Hall 9. And what these guys did, we'll go ahead and just scout it real quick. This is going to be the normal base he runs. This is the reason right here, uh, just to even it up, again, this being a random matchup, uh, just to even up the playing field for us, uh, they did go ahead and put all the uh, extra defenses that you get at Town Hall 10 over at the 9 o'clock corner to include both Inferno Towers. Uh, so just a big shout out to them. I thought that was really cool uh, that they did that. It obviously didn't help the outcome because uh, we still lost. But I really thought that was, you know, just good sportsmanship for them to do something like that uh, for us as they did see that they had that advantage, uh, doing their best to make it even for us. Um, but yeah, a tough, tough war to say the least. I believe we had something like five dip fails. Um, it, not only did we struggle 10 v 11, but so did they, uh, which, you know, begs the question, you know, what's going to happen with the 10 v 11 game, but that's where we are going to go ahead and start. I did want to show you guys, um, this 10 v 11 right here by Rodney, uh, Rodney picking up this account right here on blue Sparky. And we're going to go ahead and check out this attack right here. Notice this is their number one, guys. Uh, fully max defense. I'm pretty sure, uh, taking a look at it, I'm pretty sure that all of these defenses, from the Archer Towers to the Cannons to the Inferno Towers, are all the brand new uh, Town Hall 11 um, newly upgraded defenses. So this is as maxed as it can get. Um, not too sure about the walls, but as, again, as far as defenses go, fully, fully maxed. So again, most of us struggled uh, this war 10 v 11 on both sides. Uh, but then we have an attack like this from Rodney and we're gonna go ahead and check out the percentage that he gets on their number one entering over here. Uh, just start a little funnel up there at 12 o'clock. Uh, just doing a straight up bowler smash. Um, as he did bring three rages, he also has a free spell uh, that he is bringing along to this attack. Um, just bring about 18 or 19 bowlers um, on this attack. Didn't even bring a jump spell. No, there is no jump. He did bring the quad quake though, opening up that core, trying to basically funnel all these troops in right here, uh, basically to get to the town hall on the back side of the town hall, as opposed to coming straight in where somebody would normally jump. So just got really good value from that quake right there. And notice guys, he's already at He's already at 50% now, and you can see the queen right there uh, still has the ability left in the bag. Look at all these bowlers. Uh, bowlers just doing absolute work right now. They're going to go ahead and basically one-shot uh, the enemy archer queen. There goes the ability. Uh, no question that she's going to get that town hall under the ability. He's already at 62% and counting. Look at all these bowlers. So... I mean, I, I don't know. It's, it's really, really tough. You know, we see both clans struggle 10 v 11, but then we see something like this uh, where he picks up 65%, uh, absolutely smash that base. Um, one of our 10 v 11s. I did this one right here, and I'm not even used to hitting 10 v 11, but using the same strategy, taking out number two, um, I was able to pick up 60%, which I thought was absolutely huge uh, using this bowler smash uh, strategy. Uh, it's, again, very similar to Rodney's. So, uh, really, really interesting. Again, we don't know what exactly is going to happen to the 10 v 11 game. Only time will tell. Uh, I do want to go ahead and take a look at Shy Guy's hit right here, guys. Uh, this is that new attack that we're slowly starting to see. I'm pretty comfortable with saying that I believe it will be a part of the 11 v 10 dip meta. Um, what, what the hell are people calling it? They're calling it... Uh, stone, uh, stone bone or, or no, no, clone bone. 
I believe is what people are calling it. Uh, bring in nine dragons, 11 loons. I uh, did bring a few archers uh, just to basically set the funnel on some of those camps. And basically the strategy on this attack is you want to get at least a couple air defenses uh, with your heroes. And you usually bring... Um, either a hound or loons in the CC. I have seen a lot of these CCs with loons in them. I believe Shy Guy is going to be bringing a hound, if I remember correctly. And ideally what you do is you clone the loons as they're making their way towards the back end of the uh, base. Usually, oh, here he goes right there. So he actually did have uh, a CC hound. And he, and he dropped his loons and cloned them. Remember that clone spell? A lot of people were forgetting about this. A lot of people, uh, yeah, a lot of people forgot that the clone spell did get a buff. Not only a buff, but an extra level added at the uh, Town Hall 11 level. Um, and I, something like, what is it, 50 or 55? I don't know, 60 troop space at clones now. So you may, I mean, look at all these troops he's left with, guys. Just look at that. All kinds of dragons left. And he only took out one of those air defenses um, with his archer queen. King just funneled the trash and basically clone spelled all the loons up at 12 o'clock to take out those two air defenses. Now, what I did want to show you guys, and I already did clear it uh, with Blazing Mist. I want to show you the hit that K-Slay did using the exact same... Uh, using the exact same attack strategy on Blazing Mist, notice on this base, he does have all uh, his air defenses offset... Um, all on the back end of the base here. Here we have Kaysley bringing 10 dragons, eight of, his, 8 of his own loons right here. And notice he has that uh, level 5 clone spell. Uh, level 5 being the max level now. And I mean pretty simple. He has his king funneling one side. Queen funneling the other, uh, getting defenses as she goes, Warden behind the dragon. So not only are they going to get that uh, HP increase under the Warden's aura, but they're all going to get that value um, under that Eternal Tome ability as they're approaching bo uh, both of these Infernal Towers right here. And you can just see, wait till you guys see how many troops that he's left up with. Okay, same thing, the Shy Guys did have a... Uh, his CC did have a hound come out of it, followed it by a few loons. Dude, what the fuck, bro? Oh my god, freaking PSC keeps logging into that freaking account. All right, we're going to get back on track here. Where were we? We're about right... I'd say we're about right here. So we have k uh cloning the loons all right there. I noticed he dropped down just a few loons and then cloned... Picking up, I don't know how many troop space. Look at what happened to this base uh, with the offset ADs, guys. He's got about 50 loons up. Probably only lost a dragon or two. Ended up completely smashing uh, this base, guys. And we have a troll Tesla over there at 9 o'clock. And Kaysley doing work, just trying to highlight this attack. And for those of you that do not know, I believe, at least for me, the first time we saw this attack was in the Championship War uh, from Dark Looters and War and Glory, um, watching the attack unfold on the stream there. And we're, we're seeing this attack quite a bit. Um, again, this, this new 11v10 strategy. And this, this attack is just dominating lately. So I did want to get that out uh, to show you guys. Uh, we did have two 10v10s. We'll go ahead and show you uh, one of those. This nice hit right here on number 17. We got Gooves cleaning this one up. Rahat got really close. I believe he got uh, 97 or 98 percent on this base with just a couple uh, spell adjustments, couple troop adjustments. Gooves was able to come in here and clean this base up. But this was essentially uh, the plan that Rahat had uh, coming in here over um, basically. What the goal is, is to take out these four air defenses here. Uh, Gooves only bringing one hound. It only has one hound. Does have bowlers in the CC. Just entering uh, CB. Just has one golem. Uh, entering on, at basically at 6 o'clock on this base down here. Uh, bringing down, notice the queen is going to be meeting up with the kill squad right here. We have the king meeting up. Jump leading everything in to make sure that he takes out the enemy queen. And set up a really nice funnel with his bowlers there. There's nowhere for them to go but inside of the base. Here comes the hound loon coming out of the CC. And his kill squad just gets amazing value on this push right here. And only doing it with one golem. Uh, just doing it with one golem. So just gets amazing, amazing value. Uh, Hound goes ahead and pops. 
and you'll see he does still have the Queen's ability in the bag, uh, which will allow him not only to take out this air defense, but it, uh, she's even going to be able to get to this Inferno Tower. So you want to talk about some amazing value uh, from a Queen right there, even gets the Sweeper. Here comes the Loons coming in at about 3 o'clock. And just has a whole bunch of haste, uh, bring a total of five haste to this attack. Has a nice heal spell right there in the core uh, to absorb all not only the point defenses but also the splash damage from that max level wizard tower. And just has really good loon pathing. I notice that group up there at about 11 o'clock keeps it so his loons don't have to double back. So just gets really good value. Uh, the last air targeting defenses are going to be those two Teslas. Has all kinds of minions up as well. So just a really, really nice job. Two goobs on this attack, cleaning up uh, Rahat's hit here. So good plan from Rahat. And we had just a couple adjustments from goobs, able to get a very, very nice uh, 10v10 uh, from him right there. So good shit uh, to goobs. And we will go ahead and take a look at one more, one of our Town Hall 9 hits. Uh, which one was? I believe it was the hit on number 25. We got Danster coming in on here doing it with the Queen Walk Lalo. Uh, I just want to show you uh, this base. We are or not this exact base, but how these air defenses are laid out uh, on either side. Um, in this base, sometimes it's two ADs down at six, two up at 12, and then you have and then a base style like this where you have two air defenses in a compartment by themselves over at three and over at six. This is a good way for you guys uh, to take out these types of bases as you're gonna see Danster, uh, who I believe is Alex, uh, basically gonna completely smash this base right here, doing it with a queen charge Lalo. Notice he does have six wall breakers in the camp. There, there they go right there, gets them around that wall junction right before the DE drill goes down uh, to make sure they target that junction so his queen can reach that air defense right there. And he has one hound, and he, excuse me, he has one hound that's going to be coming out of the CC and 19 loons. Uh, notice the CC is already out, just chasing uh, these archers, doing that intentionally to make sure uh, that the queen doesn't get stuck on the hound quite yet, as he is still trying to get that nice push from her to take out that expo. Here comes the hound uh, loon portion, starting up at 11 and 12 o'clock, just trimming all these defenses, dropping down three haste, trying to make it so the hound doesn't get too far in front of those loons, so those defenses are still being tanked by the hound by the time the loons reach them. Just has really good pathing here and still has one loon to drop. Still has a rage and also a haste. Uh, did go ahead and pop the queen ability to eat through that hound and is gonna be using that rage basically at the last, I mean, there's only a few defenses left. Uh, right there has a nice rage to lead everything from that wizard tower. They're gonna go ahead and beeline it to the last two air targeting defenses being these two archer towers right here. Just a really, really good hit. Uh, I know I've been covering a lot of heavy hitter action, Town Hall 11s, Town Hall 10s on the channel lately, but we still have a lot of love for you Town Hall 9s out there. Uh, so definitely want to showcase some more Town Hall 9 hits as well. Um, so this was a really, really good example of a Queen Charge uh, Lalo from Danster, a.k.a. Alex. If I'm not mistaken, he is brand new to the clan. This might have been his first war with us. Um, but I want to get that attack out to you guys. And again, just wanted to give a big shout out to TDK, uh, you know, for that good sportsman, uh, that good sportsmanship that they had with, uh, you know, hooking us up with that base. Uh, really, really appreciated that. And so did the clan. TDK did get the victory 78-2-82. Um, so again, not the best war for us, but it was a fun random matchup that we had over the weekend. Hope you guys enjoyed the footage. And I hope you guys like that new intro. Not sure if you guys caught it, but uh, big shout out to Conan for getting, uh, for getting me that intro. Absolutely love it. And I hope you guys like it too. If you guys like the video, make sure you like, comment, uh, any questions, comments, or concerns, throw that down below. And if you guys are interested in joining uh, FFS, a link is in the description on how to join the clan family. And please subscribe to the channel if you have not already. As always, this is Riggs from Clashing FFS, and I'll see you in the very next video.